Welcome to part 4.1. This is an additional part because I'd like to show you how we can fix that little issue that we have um, at frame 125 where we set the despline and the noise to inactive. So let's um, first of all um, turn on the visibility of our particles. Uh, so click on fill object, go here to display and say under visible yes. Okay. And now let's um, go in here and let's delete the keyframes that we created for the despline and the noise. So click on despline, um, right click here on simulation and say open curve, which opens up the curve editor. And this is, uh, I would say, exactly the same as in Maya. So now let's delete that um, keyframe we returned uh, off the simulation or set it to inactive. So let's select it and hit delete on the keyboard. Yeah, um, so I'd like to ha um, have this despline and the noise field active to until the end of the simulation. But we have to change um, our keyframe some other settings here. And hopefully that helps. Um, so with that despline selected, let's go here to frame 120. That's exactly where the magic demon starts to have an effect here. Now let's um, keyframe the vortex strength and the radial, radial strength. So um, it's set to eight here. Okay, so click on that and then right click, add a key. And then we do the same here uh, for the radial strength. So click on that, right click, add a key. And then we go in, I would say 10 frames to 130. And then we are uh, again, go to vortex strength, set it to zero and then right click add a key and we do the same here for radio strength type in zero and right click add a key so that's one thing and another thing is the noise field so first of all again let's right click open the curve uh, for that noise field let's select that key where we turned off the or set it to inactive and then with that key here selected hit to delete on the keyboard i have to press delete twice um, and now we do the same exact the same stuff here so let's go back to frame 120 okay and then let's um, um, click here on strength uh, add a key so it's set to 8 here and then at frame 130 um, we can set it here to 0 and then right click and add another key and now we have to re-simulate and remesh um, the scene here, I would say from frame 119, because uh, before that we haven't changed anything, so that should work. Um, let's uh, select our particle mesh and let's check out the option here. So it's uh, set to build, yes, which means when I now click on simulate, uh, it should automatically remesh uh, after the particle simulation remesh uh, the the mesh so let's uh, see if that works so let me click here on simulate and it, it will ask you here okay overwrite the uh, bin meshes so that we have or the cache data so say yes and then i'll be back when that's done and hopefully it works yeah so my re-simulation here is done so i re-simulated uh, 81 frames here um and now let's uh, hide our um particles again so click on the fill object emitter and say visible no and what I see here in frame 200 is that we um, uh, have an, a hole in here um, yeah so just some some minor uh, tweaks here um, having an you know an effect here on the last uh, frame or the last frames so I think I'm gonna simulate this later on for uh, some additional 20 frames or something um, and see if, if that hole closes up or not. Um, okay, now let's um, try something out here. Uh, let me just uh, create a playback, a video preview. So click on that. And this is caching out that scene. All right, so let's play this. Okay. Oh yeah, that looks much better.
looks much better. Um, even if we still have some something going on here with that hole in the last frame, but it's it's definitely looking uh, better than what I did in the last video. Um, yeah. So one last thing. So let me just try to simulate. Um, uh, some additional 20 frames here. So let me just uh, expand the timeline to f uh, 220. Hit enter. And then let me just uh, go on simulating. Um, we don't have to um, have our uh, fill object particles visible for that. So just leave it like it is. And then say simulate and I'll be back when the 20 frames are done. Yeah, so here uh, with the 20 additional frames here in our timeline that uh, definitely filled up that last hole we got here in that S. And I think, yeah, we just leave it like it is. It, it looks better than uh, what I did in the last video and it's it, it's still not perfect, but um, I think that's um, I think that's good enough here. And now let's uh, save our scene here. Uh, save project. And then let's open up Maya. Okay, so and then let's open up our scene file. Uh, open scene. Uh, I saved it out as start underscore two. And um, what should automatically happen is because uh, Maya is reading those uh, bin files out of that folder. So if I expand my timeline here to 220 frames, and just for performance sake, let me just close real flow here. Um, and now let's uh, see if. Uh, if we switch here to frame 200 something, yeah, you can see that uh, Maya automatically uh, uses the mesh that we just uh, re-simulated or re-calculated. Uh, okay, so yeah, let me just uh, change my camera angle here to a little bit more from the front. Somewhere about here. And then let's uh, leave the settings as they are. Um, except uh, let me open up the uh, render settings here. I'd like to render this out um, with... Uh, uh, so we have to change here the frame range. That's one thing, almost forgot it. 220 from 1 to 220. And then I'm changing my image size, uh, size to uh, HD, uh, full HD here. Um, this will increase render time uh, quite a bit, but uh, yeah, ju just let's uh, go here uh, to render again, and then go to batch render, and uh, just click on that, and then I always like to open the script editor here to see if that's working. Yeah, it takes a second here, come on. There you go. So let me pause the video, and I'll be back when the 220 frames are re-rendered. Yeah, my rendering is done here, and I loaded the uh, image sequence here into FJAC. So once I hit uh, play here, it runs with 30 frames per second on my screen. Uh, it doesn't on your screen right now because you're watching my video recording here, and I'm recording with 15 frames per second. But I'm pretty sure um, that you uh, see what's going on here, and we definitely fixed that problem at frame 125. Um, since we changed, you know, those settings there, uh, this looking way better. Um, it's not perfect in the end, so uh, yeah, we could tweak that. You know, the E is looking like an E, or uh, we could tweak that. You know, the L is connected somehow to the V and stuff like that. But for a introductory uh, introduction video or tutorial for RealFlow, uh, I think this is. Um, just showing that you can create some cool looking stuff here in just a, a short amount of time. Um, and yeah, feel free to uh, post some comments on my YouTube channel. Feel free to um, ask me some questions if you want to. If you have, uh, you know, something, just um, ask me. And I, I'm pretty sure this is not the last uh, video tutorial about RealFlow. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm or I already have something on my mind, uh, which is concerning about the the real flow hybrido stuff, which um, 
which is pr uh, just amazing. Um, you, c you can c uh, simulate millions of particles on one computer, and uh, yeah, some some pretty cool stuff. Uh, RealFlow is just a lot of fun playing around with. Um, so hopefully you learned something, and um, see you in the next tutorial.